Welcome to this video on the anatomy of the kidney and here we're looking at the kidney from the outside and round about covering all the external surface of the kidney there is a renal capsule made of thin connective tough tissue and this can be peeled off without too much difficulty and the thing about this renal capsule is it's very rich in nociceptors very rich in pain receptors so it makes the kidney very pain sensitive as you know if anyone's ever poked you in the kidney but it also makes disease of the kidney potentially painful or hemorrhage inside the kidney painful as well. Now first of all we notice the renal hilum. Now the hilum is this gap here. It's the gap through which the renal artery goes in so there we see the renal artery branching down here into segmental arteries. Here we see segmental veins as the blood leaves via the renal vein. So arterial blood directly from the aorta is going to go in via the renal artery and blood is going to drain from the renal vein directly back into the inferior vena cava. And when the urine has been produced in the kidney, it's going to drain down this tube here, which goes to the bladder, and this is the ureter. The ureter has muscular walls, and the transport of urine from the kidney down to the bladder is an active peristaltic process. Looking at the kidney side on, here we see the lumens of the vessels. I think we can see the arterial lumen here and the venous lumen here and here's another view of the ureter. And also going in and out through the hilum, not illustrated on this model, there's going to be lymphatic vessels draining the kidney of excess lymphatic fluid. And there's going to be nerves going in and out of the kidney as well. And as we go around to look at the cutaway section, we notice that the kidney is in layers. The outer layer here is the renal cortex. So here we see the renal cortex going around the outside of the organ. So this is all renal cortex here on the outside. And also, I don't know if you can see, but that tissue there is the same kind of tissue as that there by the looks of it. And these are the cortical columns. So the cortex is the outside part, but then cortical columns project down between these triangular shaped structures that form the renal medulla. There's another cortical column there. And the medulla is these triangular shaped structures. Collectively, these triangular shaped structures form the medulla of the kidney. And you can see that these medullas are actually py pyramidal. They are pyramid shaped, as we see rather nicely on this 3D representation. So here we have the base of the renal pyramid and going down towards the apex of the renal pyramid. And the apex contains the papilla. So here we have the papilla at the apex of a renal medullary pyramid. And papilla means nipple like structure. And what's happening is the urine is going to be produced between the cortex and the medulla and when it's produced it's going to go down collecting ducts that travel down through the medullary pyramid until we get to near the bottom of the pyramid here where there's larger ducts called papillary ducts 
just before the urine will drain through the renal papilla into this tube-like structure here which is a minor calyx. So each papilla will drain its urine into a minor calyx. There's another one there. And collectively this system is called the the, the collective name for calyx is calyces. So we have the calyces. And here we see them with their rounded walls not cut away. And what we see there is that is looking at a calyx as if we're looking at it from inside a medullary pyramid. And we can see the numerous papillary ducts taking urine into the minor calyx. And then several minor calyces will come together to form a major calyx. And again here, and here, and here, we can see a papilla at the apex of other renal medullary pyramids taking urine into the calyceal system. And once the urine drains into the calyceal system, it goes round and drains into this wider structure here, which is the renal pelvis. So the renal pelvis is the communication between the calyces and the ureter. That starts off on its fairly long journey down towards the urinary bladder. Now collectively the cortex and the medulla are described as the renal parenchyma. And you can see here the edge of the renal parenchyma, just there. And this bit here is actually part of the gap inside the kidney. So one way to think of it is the kidney is sort of folded round on itself. And there's a hollowed out area in the middle here. Now I know this hollowed out area is full of the calyces, the blood vessels, the lymphatics and the nerves, but it's not part of the renal parenchyma. It's not part of the cortex and medulla of the kidney. And the renal sinus, any little gaps in it, are filled with adipose tissue. So the space between the blood vessels the calyces the lymphatics the nerves filled with protective adipose tissue Now the renal corpuscles are located in the renal cortex the corpuscles are the first part of the nephrons and then the second part of the renal tubules. So these are located in the cortex here. The process of ultrafiltration goes on and the glomerular filtrate passes into the nephron where there is selective reabsorption and indeed a degree of tubular secretion and eventually urine-like substance is formed and goes into collecting ducts which pass down through the medulla eventually going into or approaching the apex of the medulla where they become these larger papillary ducts so it's passing down here like that and then when the urine gets down here into the larger ducts and into the calyces no more reabsorption is possible so at that stage this is genuinely urine for the first time. Let's just trace the blood supply here we see the renal artery going in and these are segmental arteries 
taking blood from the larger renal artery through to the smaller arteries that penetrate the renal parenchyma. So here we can see the blood vessel penetrating the renal parenchyma because this part is in the sinus and this part is in the renal parenchyma. And actually these arteries divide the lobes of the kidney. They are interlobar arteries go between the lobes. So a single lobe is like a slice of kidney. A single lobe would be one medullary pyramid and the overlying cortex. So I could just trace round a lobe here. This would be one lobe. One medullary pyramid and its overlying cortex. So here we see the interloba artery going through the renal parenchyma. And here we see it in cross section. The interloba artery going up the renal cortical pyramid. When it gets to the top of the renal cortical pyramid, it turns into this acute artery. And here we see smaller arteries going off. These are the interlobular arteries. And the afferent arterioles themselves branch off from these interlobular arteries to supply each individual glomerulus for each individual renal corpuscle. And you've probably got half a million to a million and a half of these renal corpuscles. That's about the number of nephrons in a kidney. The average is about maybe just under a million, but some people might have less. Some people may have considerably more. So a million or more, typically a million or more nephrons per kidney. So amazingly intricately packaged the renal corpuscles in the cortex. Now if we look here we can see that there's another vein or a vein similar to the artery we looked at before arching round the top of the base and in the same way as the arcuate artery there arch round the top of the base that's the arcuate artery so the arcuate vein does the same thing. And we see the interlobular veins here draining down into the arcuate vein. And we also see vessels from the vastus rector capillary network going, bringing blood back up from the medulla in also to the arcuate vein. So whether the blood is drained up from the medulla or down from the cortex, the blood enters the arcuate vein, goes round back into the interlobular, sorry that's the interlobar veins. The interlobular veins are the little ones, the interlobar ones are the big ones. So the blood's draining from the arcuate into the interloba, back into the segmental veins, which in turn are going to drain back into the renal vein. So we know the kidneys are units for purifying and filtering blood. And we see that they are an amazingly intricate arrangement of interconnected specialised tissues, beautifully anatomically arranged to facilitate this essential physiological requirement.